you know, when they're coming off, they sometimes they'll give you a, a little bit of hassle, but that's just due to the magnetic force. So this one's giving me a little hassle. I have an old crappy screwdriver. I don't mind using for a chisel. Pick up here on it. It's not going to be hassle. It's giving me a hassle. But that's okay. Never let an inanimate object kick your butt, right? Right. Okay. Now we're down to down to the stator here. Now that I'm down to the stator, I'm going to go ahead and remove all the electronic components on this thing. <sighs> yeah, this is missing a piece in here. Usually a, usually a little screw in a bracket that holds down the uh, stator on this motor. And it isn't there. On these connectors, the manual will show you how to take them apart. A lot of them are different. Uh, these, these are pretty easy connectors to pull apart. I mean, pretty self-explanatory if you look at them closely. Other ones get a little bit more involved. And if you don't know exactly how to do it, you end up breaking the connector, trying it. So um, that's one thing to always, uh, always make sure that you understand how the connector works and that you're using the proper equipment to get them pulled apart because uh, in a lot of cases these connectors are unavailable and your only option is total re replacement of the component which can get quite costly. Okay, we got our stator disconnected, we're ready to pull that guy out of there. So we need uh, three eighths. bolts that hold the stator's arm are not stainless, whereas in uh, most other cases the bolts are stainless. These are not. And uh, it is important to be sure that if it, is, if it is frozen a little bit that you don't force it because you break it off the top of your block then you're into, again, spending more money on things you didn't need to. You need to heat these to get them out in some cases and uh, it's not a real easy task but it's what you got to do. If it does get into where you're going to ruin your stator doing that then sometimes it's better than to break the bolt off and to just extract it at a, at a later date. The stator's a couple hundred dollars getting the bolts out, you know, 10, 15, 20 dollars depending on the uh, level of difficulty. reduction starters is in two pieces this is uh, the uh, it's the Bendix portion of your gear reduction starter on one of these and it just uh, it's held in by that uh, plastic cover and uh, by a hole in the block that'll just come out of there you want to make sure that you save these these little guys here are called bow washers and they just uh, they, they, they when you tighten the thing down it holds it holds it all into place and uh, keeps a little bit of tension on it, still only allowing it to uh, spin freely. So, we got that guy out of there. We're gonna go to rectifier. We're gonna get the rectifier broke loose. Rectifier is one of your components that 
it's likely to be salted in on a lot of motors. You want to be very careful. If it hasn't ever been taken out and your motor's, you know, 15 years or older, um, you might need to apply some heat to get these out. However, you must do so very liberally because you melt the inside of the rectifier, and then, you know, more money out the window. And all, all of these things happen to us here. I mean, while we're building these motors, a lot of it's unforeseen. Uh, there's a, you know, a lot of hidden expense that goes into doing this. People are like, oh, you got a motor for $5,000, you put 1000 into it, and you want 4000 for it. That's not fair. Well, a lot of people don't see that a lot of these screws break off. These components get overheated at times in disassembly. Um, but there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of hidden expense that goes into building one of these engines that uh, needs to be absorbed somewhere. And uh, well, most most of the time that's on the customer. Some of the time it's on us. Okay, got the stator bolts out. There's little star washers in, in here that uh, need to be kept with the with the uh, uh, rectifier bolt, should I say. Make sure that uh, when you go to reassemble it, you put your uh, put your star washers in there because they they help uh, they help maintain a, uh, a positive ground, a positive continuity. from the body of the rectifier to the block of the engine. Okay, there's our rectifier. Okay, got that disconnected. This is our shift assist switch down here. I'm just gonna kinda hold on to that for later. Okay, uh, next I'm just going to go ahead and I like to keep all this connected. It's it's much easier to do that. Keep it all connected, pull it off all, all in one piece. Keep it all connected and pull all the wiring harness and everything off all in one piece with the starter. Now you can do that on uh, the 60 degrees, the 90 degrees carbureted engines. Um, you get into e techs and DIs and stuff like that, and it's a, it's a completely different monster than what we're dealing with here. And the entire wiring harness has to be removed from the engine and, uh, and dealt with separately. Over on this one, everything links into the rectifier and everything links into the uh, starter solenoid. So once you get it all pulled off in basically one clump, when it comes time to clean everything, you can remove one wire at a time, clean the post, clean the wire terminal, replace the wire terminal if, if, if necessary, and, uh, and put it right back together rather than you know having 20 wiring connections wondering where they all go. here. Connection for your primer solenoid. And then we also have a vacuum switch on this motor. All this unplugs. And then the uh, connector that goes to the VRO pump. And then there we go. All our wine harness comes off there pretty simply. It's you know pretty organized. And when you go to put it all back together, you clean it all up and just clean one terminal at a time, and it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it, a lot of the difficulty out of it. Set that over there. Now, all my screws here. Get it labeled 
that, need to label that. Started off with new bags. A lot of times I'll just reuse these bags. When I put a motor back together, I'll keep all the bags. I mean, a lot of you guys ain't gonna be doing motor after motor after motor, but but uh, then you can just use the same bags. I mean, because all there's all the parts are gonna be the same, no matter if you have a different style of motor, different horsepower, whatever. You're still gonna have a rectifier. You're still gonna have a stator. You're still gonna have a starter. And I just saved these bags and uh, use them again on the next motor. Okay. Now, go ahead and continue to get the rest of this, uh, rest of these covers out of our way. Okay. 